what I thought I'd do is actually uh, start off this event uh, with some cool demos. And I'd like to invite Scott Hanselman on stage just to actually show off both what you can do with VS 2015, as well as highlight a whole bunch of new capabilities that we're really excited uh, to bring to market for the first time as part of this week's announcement. So here's Scott. Cool. Thank you, sir. Uh, so it, today we're going to be showing a whole series of demos that are going to be based on a health clinic theme. So we're going to be using healthcare throughout. Everything will be based on this health clinic. So in this particular application is going to be the public facing app for the health clinic. And this has been written in ASP.NET 5 using the .NET Core CLR. And this is kind of a, a hello world demo that you've seen before. I'll go and uh, run this app and you'll see what you've usually seen. This is the standard hello world. Now of course ASP.NET 5 is open source. The .NET Core is open source. We use lots and lots of open source at Microsoft and in fact I can easily bring in additional open source. From Visual Studio here I'm just going to go and say manage NuGet packages. NuGet is where .NET server side libraries come from uh, and you can see a number of popular ones there. But I'm going to try to bring in a library called require.js. This is a JavaScript library. It's a client side library that people use on other platforms. And you'll notice here that in Visual Studio update one it's actually promoting that I use Bower instead. Bower is a package manager that's appropriate for client side technologies. So now we've got tooling within VS for me to go and bring in that JavaScript library. And you'll notice here on the side Bower and NPM are both uh, in, available as package manager options. And now I brought require.js that client side loader. So we've got all that rich tooling for the technologies that people want to use. Now I want this hello world app to look a little bit prettier. So I'm just going to pick these up. Uh, some existing assets and drop them in and then uh, replace. And then I'll come over here to Edge and hit refresh. And then the front end of my application looks nice. And that kind of make a change and hit refresh experience is what you would expect with static things like CSS and JavaScript. But I can also go back into Visual Studio and look for the home controller, for example. And I'll grab some, uh, some actual C sharp and I'll make a change to the code best health clinic ever. And then I'm just going to hit save but I'm not going to do a build. I'm going to come back into Edge and then hit refresh. And when we go over to the about page it's actually recompiled that app. So I can have that kind of make changes to code and hit refresh and make changes to code and hit refresh. The experience that you'd expect with a Ruby or a Node but you're getting that with the power of C sharp and the core CLR. That actually compiled the application itself. So Visual Studio didn't do the compilation. ASP.NET did the compilation. And that's going to enable us to do that cross platform as well. So that's a, a really nice experience. Now this application is going to need diagnostics and telemetry. So I'm going to bring in application insights. And this is going to send all the performance and availability and diagnostics information and send that telemetry up into the cloud. So as I run this application, if errors occur, if exceptions happen, either in JavaScript or in .NET, that will be sent off to the cloud. So we'll right click and hit publish. And we're going to send this to the East US. We've got data centers all over the world. In this case, we're going to send this one to the East US. And while that's happening, I'll run over into the Azure dashboard. And there's a thing called Traffic Manager that allows me to do geographically load balanced systems. So we have this not just in East US, but also North Europe and Brazil all at the same time. So this public facing website is now suddenly available everywhere. What I can do with that, oh, and there it just got published, it just popped up. I'm going to switch back over to the dashboard and pick that website and click on tools here because I want to do some performance testing. Now that I have a scalable website that's been sent all over the world, I'm going to performance test it. And I'm going to do that using the power of the cloud to create that load. We're going to generate load from the East US. And with Azure and Visual Studio Online, we're going to collect a whole bunch of computers that are going to now start hitting that machine and generate load. That's going to take a few moments to start up. So I'll show you some load that I generated just a few minutes ago. You can see here we had 130,000 successful hits. I can see how many requests a second were hitting that site. So already I know that I'm going to have a great experience no matter where in the world that we are. And all of that information is being sent into Application Insights. Now I can look at that Application Insights diagnostics and telemetry in, in Azure. 
but also I like spending time in Visual Studio and with Visual Studio Update 1, we have included the ability to look at that telemetry from within the IDE itself. So I'm gonna come in here and bring up the application insights search and look at the time range of the last few hours to see that telemetry data. And here I've got all this information that I can query and see page views, what browser it used, where the data came from, look at time ranges, I can dig in on individual page views and see all the detail, both server side and client side, and query that, that richness of the telemetry. But I can do it from inside Visual Studio. So you can see that with ASP.NET, .NET Core, Azure, and uh, Application Insights, I've got everything that I need in one place. Great, thanks Scott. I'm excited to announce today you know, some of the things that Scott also showed there in terms of the ability to use the new ASP.NET 5 uh, as well as based on top of the new .NET Core uh, runtime uh, that enables things, a whole bunch of new capabilities including that dynamic compilation that we're releasing the release candidate of both of those technologies this morning uh, and they're now available for you to go ahead and take advantage of and use. Uh, and what's great about the release candidate is not only can you download them and build apps with them, but they also include a go live license. Uh, and that enables you to also now start to go into production and start to deploy real apps to real customers using all those technologies. Let's take a look at what you can do now with this new support that's cross-platform. So here's Scott. Cool, thanks. I like that little bit of applause there when we talked about how we can get this to run everywhere, so I hope that you uh, enjoy this. So I'm gonna go and uh, right click and say publish again. When we publish something to, uh, to Windows, we can go to Azure, we can go to IIS. When we publish to Linux, you, you're not just gonna necessarily FTP that up to Linux, you'll send it maybe up there to Docker and run it in a container. You can notice here when I hit publish in Visual Studio that Docker appears in the list there. It's first class inside of Visual Studio. So I've gone and said publish to take the exact same ASP.NET 5 application running on the .NET Core RC1, and I'm gonna send this now up to Azure on a Linux VM with Docker inside. This is using the same Docker tools that you already know how to use. So just like we saw that integration with Bower, a tool that people know how to use at the command line, here's an example of using Docker, another tool we know at the command line. I'm gonna bring up the command line, and uh, in fact, I'm gonna use the new SSH uh, client that you may have heard we're gonna be shipping with Windows. A little tiny clap for that, appreciate that. Um, no, no. It's, so we're gonna go and we're gonna shush into, uh, into this machine over here. Uh, this is now switching from the command line. Now we are looking at Ubuntu running in Azure. I'm gonna hit top to prove it. You can see Docker right there using up some CPU as Visual Studio is sending that up to Docker and that build is being sent. And uh, that Docker container is going to be one of these images. There's our Docker images. You can see here's my health coming in there. And I can say Docker PS-A. You see, just, here you go, 14 seconds ago was created the image called My Health, and then in the background, in the bottom left, you can see Visual Studio trying to talk to Docker to get that uh, fired up. That is gonna be a version of this exact same website, so I can publish to the operating system of the choice that I have, uh, publish to the container that makes me happy, and in this case, that's gonna pop up. Now this, again, has been kind of a hello world demo, uh, sometimes when we see hello worlds, we're not really impressed. We're like, well, okay, they, oh, there it is, they, hello world. Um, but we are not joking when we say this is ready today. This is a hello world demo. Let's see a more advanced one. Let's see the private section of this health clinic with authentication, with SQL and entity framework, with Linux uh, talking to SQL Server. This is real data on a real app running in Docker. Now. You could run one app on one VM in one Docker container, but in a real sophisticated production environment, you might start including things like many Docker containers on many virtual machines. This is in fact running in a cluster of virtual machines running multiple Docker containers, and we managed all of that with the Azure Container Service that takes care of all of the complexities of creating all of those containers. And then I can go and layer on top of that and include technologies like Mesos or Marathon to manage them. So I'm getting to use the technologies that I want to use on the cloud that makes me happy. So hopefully that gets you excited. You can go and make this happen. You can start writing apps with ASP.NET and C Sharp and putting it on Docker containers and Linux today, okay? Start doing that now. 
This is some of the great stuff that we're doing today, but let's take a moment and talk about uh, the potential for tomorrow. So I'm going to actually switch to another machine here. Here we go. So here I'm on an Ubuntu machine. And uh, I'm going to look in this folder and see that I've got some C sharp code there. And you know, wouldn't it be nice if at some point in the future I could do something like apt-get and ask Linux for .NET and be rest assured that .NET was there and ready for me? And wouldn't it be nice if I could say something like .NET compile and then compile a .NET application and run this on Linux? This is a preview of some of the work that we're going to see early next year where .NET and the .NET command line uh, here is going to allow us to go and run an application like this with a .NET Core on Ubuntu. Now this example is the .NET that you know and love. This is the .NET where we've created a DLL and we have a jitter and we have a garbage collector and all of that. But wouldn't it be nice if I could do something like this and say dash dash native and use that .NET native technology that you're familiar with from Windows that makes Windows Universal apps so nice. I'm going to go and add dash dash native there. I'm going to compile this application. Same exact application, same exact compiler, same command line, .NET compile. Here is the original one. And there is, to be clear, a statically linked, no dependency required, native code application compiled from C sharp. And when I run it, it's fast because it's native code running on Linux that was compiled with the open source .NET Core. And this is where you applaud. <laughs> <laughs> I know it takes a moment to absorb, but that's a big deal. So I'm going to go ahead and just pull that applause from you. So this is some of the future work that we're doing, but I want you to know that you can take .NET Core RC1 today and start building applications. You can deploy them in Docker. You can deploy them on Linux, on Ubuntu, on Red Hat. You can put them in Azure. And I hope that you have as much fun working with this as we had uh, fun building it. Great. Thanks, Scott. Thanks, sir. <laughs>